Hey, boys and girls, Jason Wyatt. It's Grandpa Story Hour. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Mom, Dad, Auntie, Uncle, Grandma, Grandpa, whomever the adult is that said, you got to watch Jason Wyatt's Grandpa because he's going to read to you. This is going to be kind of a longer book, so you got to sit down and get ready because uh, I'll just give you a fair warning. It's a beautiful book, though. It's called Library Lion. Library Lion. I want to thank the librarian who uh, loaned me the book. She knows who she is. She works at the school where I work, and I don't represent the school, so I can't say the school's name. Here you go. Library Lion. However, the scholars, they know. They see me. They know what's going on. Okay, here we go. So one day, a lion came to the library. He walked right past the circulation desk and up into the stacks. Mr. McBee ran down the hall to hit to the head librarian's office. Miss Merriweather, he called. No running, said Miss Merriweather without looking up. But there's a lion, said Mr. McBee, in the library. Is he breaking any rules? Asked Miss Merriweather. She was very particular about rule breaking. Well, no, said Mr. McBee, not really. Then leave him be. What? There's a, li there's a lion in the library. You're going to leave him be. Okay, so here we go. The lion wandered around the library. He sniffed the catalogs, books. Now, you don't have those. Well, anyway, he rubbed his head against the new book collection. Then he padded over to the story corner and went to sleep. No one was sure what to do. There weren't any rules about lions in the library. Um, I don't know if you really need to have rules to do. Okay, anyway. Soon it was time for story hour. There weren't any rules about lions at story hour either. Um, the story lady seemed a little nervous, okay? Uh, but she read out the first book's title in a good, clear voice. The lion looked up. The story lady kept reading. The lion stayed for the next story and the story after that. He waited for another story, but the children began to walk away. Story hour's over, a little girl told him. It's time to go. The lion looked at the children. He looked at the story lady. He looked at the closed books. Then he roared very loud. I think that would scare Grandpa. But anyway, Miss Merriweather came striding out of her office. Who is making that noise, she demanded. It's the lion, said Mr. McBee. Miss Merriweather marched over to the lion. If you cannot be quiet, you will have to leave. She said in a stern voice, those are the rules. The lion kept roaring. He sounded sad. The little girl tugged on Miss Merriweather's dress. If he promises to be quiet, can he come back for story hour tomorrow? She asked. The lion stopped roaring. He looked at Miss Merriweather. Miss Merriweather looked back. Then she said, yes, a nice, quiet lion would certainly be allowed to come back for story hour tomorrow. Hooray, said the children. You're behaving really good. I'm proud of you. Here we go. Here we go. The next day, the lion came back. You are early, said Miss Merriweather. Story hour is not for three until three o'clock. The lion did not budge. Very well, said Miss Merriweather. You might as well make yourself useful. She sent him off to dust the encyclopedias until it was time for story hour. The next day... The lion came early again. This time, Maris Merriweather asked him to lick all the envelopes for the overdue notices. Licking envelopes. Blech. Soon the lion began doing things without being asked. He dusted the encyclopedia. He licked the envelopes. He let small children stand on his back to reach books on the highest shelves. Then he curled up in the story corner to wait for the story hour to begin. Pretty smart line, don't you think, Jason? Pretty smart. At first, the people in the library were nervous about the lion, but soon they got used to having him around. In fact, he seemed very well suited for the library. His big feet were quiet on the library floor. He made a comfy backrest for the children at the story hour. And he never roared in the library anymore. What a helpful lion, people said. They patted his soft head as he walked by. How did we ever get along without him? Mr. McBee scowled when he heard that. 
They had always gotten along fine before no lions were, were needed. Lions, he thought, could not understand rules. They did not belong in the library. I think someone's a little jealous, don't you? One day, after he had dusted all the encyclopedias, and those are books with information in them, by the way, encyclopedias, okay? And licked all the envelopes and helped all the small children, the lion padded down the hall to Miss Merriweather's office to see what else there was to do. There was still some time left before story hour. Hello, lion, said Miss Merriweather. I know something you can do. You can bring a book back into the stacks for me. Let me just get it down from the shelf. Miss Merriweather stepped up onto the step stool. The book was just out of reach. Miss Merriweather stood on her toes. She stretched out her fingers. Almost there, she said. Then Miss Merriweather stretched a little too far. Uh oh. Ouch, said Miss Merriweather softly. She did not get up. Mr. McBee, Mr. McBee, she called after him, Mr. McBee. But Mr. McBee was at the circulation desk. He could not hear her calling. Lion, said Miss Merriweather, please go and get Mr. McBee. The lion ran down the hall. No running, <laughs> Miss Merriweather called after him. You're behaving, you're doing great. The lion put his big front paws up on the circulation desk and looked at Mr. McBee. Go away, lion, said Mr. McBee. I'm busy. The lion whined. He pointed his nose down to the hall toward Miss Mayweather's office. Mr. McBee ignored him. Finally, the lion did the only thing he could do, think of to do. And he goes, he looked at Mr. McBee right in the eye. Then he opened his mouth very wide and he roared. The loudest roar he had ever roared in his life. Oh, he's mad. That's a mad. That's a mad lion. We're in trouble. You're behaving. You're doing a good job. Mr. Bigby gasped. You're not being quiet, he said to the lion. You're breaking the rules. Mr. Bigby walked down the hall as fast as he could. The lion did not follow him. He had broken the rules. He knew what that meant. He hung his head and walked towards the doors. Mr. McBee did not notice. Miss Merriweather, he called out as he walked. Miss Merriweather, the lion broke the rules. The lion broke the rules. Again, you're behaving, doing a good job. He burst into Miss Merriweather's office. She was not in her chair. Miss Merriweather, he asked. Sometimes, said Miss Merriweather from the front floor behind her desk, there's a good reason to break the rules, even in the library. Now go, please, please go to call a doctor. I think I've broken my arm. Mr. McBee ran to the call a doctor. No running! Miss Merriweather called after him. It's kind of funny. After she just said, sometimes you got to break the rules, and she does, says don't run. Anyway, the next day all things were back to normal, almost. Miss Merriweather's left arm was in a cast. The doctor had told her not to work too hard. I will have my lion to help me, Miss Merriweather thought. But the lion did not come to the library that morning. At three o'clock, Miss Merriweather walked over to the story corner. The story lady was just beginning a story for the children. The lion was not there. That's kind of sad. People in the library kept looking from their books and computer screens, hoping they would see a familiar furry face. But the lion did not come that day. Oh, the lion did not come the next day either. Or the day after that. Again, you're behaving really, really doing a great job. One evening, Mr. McBee stopped by Miss Merriweather's office on his way out. Can I do anything for you before I go, Miss Merriweather? He asked her. No, thank you, said Miss Merriweather. She was looking out the window. Her voice was very quiet, even for the library. Mr. McBee frowned as he walked by. He thought there probably was something he could do for Miss Merriweather, after all. 
Doing great. Jason White, you're behaving. You're doing great. I'm proud of you. Grandpa's happy. Here we go. Mr. McBee left the library, but he did not go home. He walked around the neighborhood. He looked under cars. He looked behind bushes. He looked in backyards and trash cans and even tree houses. He's looking for the lion. Finally, he circled all the way back to the library and the lion was sitting outside looking in through the glass doors. Hello, lion, said Mr. McBee. The lion did not turn around. I thought you might like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a new rule at the library. No roaring allowed unless you have a very good reason. Say, if you're trying to help a friend who's been hurt, for example, the lion's ears twitched. He turned around. But Mr. McBee was already walking away. The next day, Mr. McBee walked down to the hall to Miss Merriweather's office. What is it, Mr. McBee? asked Miss Merriweather in her new, sad, quiet voice. I thought you might like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a lion in the library. Miss Merriweather jumped from her chair and ran down the hall. Mr. McBee smiled. No running, he called after her. Miss Merriweather did not listen. Sometimes there was a good reason to break the rules. Uh, yes, even in the library. And there's a cute picture at the end. So here's the deal. It did say sometimes, not all the time. You should all, you got to listen to the librarian. When she says, be quiet, you need to be quiet. However, if somebody's getting hurt, if somebody's getting sick, and that includes you, you might need to say something. In fact, you should say something. All right? If someone's getting hurt, someone's getting sick, someone's not doing something right, Get to the librarian and say something to her, all right? Jason, Wyatt, boys and girls, I'm talking to you. Hey, mommy, daddy, auntie, uncle, grandma, grandpa, who's ever watching this video, thank you so much for trusting me, sharing a story with your beautiful blessing from God. We do have a Venmo account. You want to drop some coinage in there? We would love it very much. It's, this is our ministry. We're not, we're not pastors or anything. We just use the word ministry because it's, I'm, I'm trying to share love. So I love you. Thanks a lot. Wyatt, Jason, grandpa loves you. See you soon.